What's going on everybody? Tom here with Keto Lifestyle and welcome to another cooking video just for you subscribers out there. And today is once again another installment of our ketogenic barbecue series. Now in today's video we are going to be taking this dry rub for our pork and chicken and making a ketogenic smoked baby back ribs or whatever other kind of ribs you have at your disposal. Now once again this recipe is designed to be used on a smoker but I am including directions on how to use it in your oven and the results are pretty much the exact same. You can still get that fall off the bone tender delicious rib that you really want. So if that sounds good to you guys, hang on tight because we're going to show you how to make it. All right, everybody, welcome to the recipe. Now today we are making pork ribs, obviously. So what I have here is a rack of pork loin ribs. Now baby back ribs are gonna be more tender, more juicy, but these guys were on sale and y'all know me, I like to save some money. So the first thing we need to do is prep this. So what I like to do is uh, take some paper towels and just kind of pat it dry. That way it's easier to work with. And then we need to remove this membrane here because when that cooks, it's gonna become really tough and you don't want that. So usually you can just grab a corner and it starts to come up. You might need a knife. And then I use paper towels actually to help me get a grip on it because it is a little bit slippery. So you can see how it's starting to come up right here. I'll pinch it with my paper towels and just peel it off. It shouldn't be that hard. Now this can go in your trash and we're ready to start dry rubbing it. Now what I have here is the dry rub that we made in the video that I will link in the card right here. And it is wrapped in saran wrap because I'm obviously touching pork and I don't want to contaminate that container that's going back in my cabinet. Alternately, you could be using gloves, but I ran out. So we're gonna do it with the saran wrap. So now all we're really gonna do is go ahead and shake this dry rub onto your ribs. Don't be stingy with it. You don't want like a really thick, thick coating, but be generous. And then I like to go ahead and just kind of rub it in. Now in order to get a me measurement for the dry rub that we're using, what I do is I did weigh this ahead of time. It was 14.65 ounces. And I will weigh it when we're done rubbing, just so I can track the amount of spices that I was using. Now you will notice that some of the dry rub does end up on the tray. So what I like to do is just kind of press the meat down onto that, just so that I can pick it up and we're not wasting any spices. Cause let's face it, spices can get expensive. As you can see, it's kind of changed color completely and it's well coated in the seasoning. Your hands may look a little bit like this, but hey, wash them or again, gloves will help. Now what I like to do with this is I want to wrap it in saran wrap and stick it in the fridge for about three hours. So I'm going to go wash my hands and get my saran wrap. Now something like ribs here does not need anywhere near as long to sit in the fridge as something like say a pulled pork because of the amount of meat on it and how thick the meat is, this stuff should go through pretty quick. Now that being said, you could actually pull this out and uh, dry rub it the night before if you wanted to, but if you've only got a few hours, I would say two to three and you're going to be good. Heck, I've even done these without letting it sit and it turned out pretty good. So now that this is wrapped in saran wrap, we're gonna go ahead and stick it in the fridge for about three hours before we put it on the smoker. Once I'm ready to cook these things, I preheat my smoker to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're using an oven, do the same thing. Then we're gonna place the ribs meat side up directly on the grate for about two hours. Once they reach about 170 to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, we're then going to wrap them in a double layer of aluminum foil. This serves two purposes. It keeps them juicy and it makes them tender. Without the foil, it'll get dry and kind of fibrous. Once you've wrapped in the aluminum foil, throw it back on the grill for about another hour until they reach between 204 and 208 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it is time to unwrap it and see our finished product. If you did everything right, you should be able to just grab a bone, give it a little twist and pull it directly out of the meat. Ribs should really be that tender. But anyway, here is a picture of our finished product. All right, everybody, now that you've seen the recipe, we are here with a taste test. So I have one of the ribs here. There's no sauce or anything on it. This is just straight off the smoker and uh, we're gonna taste it. Now that is a good rib, guys. The secret to good ribs is not getting it stuck in your teeth. If it's getting stuck in your teeth and you're gonna have to pry it off the bone, that is not a good rib. You want that bone to slip off. You want the meat to be soft, juicy, tender. Mine's a little bit smoky because I did it out on the smoker. The dry rub packs a ton of flavor. And if you really wanted to, that red barbecue sauce that we made in this video, goes great on these. I'm not a big fan of the white sauce on ribs, but the, ri uh, the red sauce is absolutely perfect. 
So with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and close up the video. If you liked the video, leave it a like. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section. And if you have not subscribed yet, do me a huge favor, guys. Hit that subscribe button, show some love, and I will see you in the next one.